Hey guys, thank you for joining me. This is an exciting update. We have a new massive feature that we've added to AMZ Analyzer, something you guys have been asking for and we're happy to deliver. Yes, folks, we have estimated number of sales finally in the program. What this field will tell you is a estimate of the number of units that each listing is estimated to sell. Guys, I know this is a um, highly requested feature. It is working 99%. Uh, it is still officially in beta, although we're releasing it to you. The only beta thing about it is sometimes you may notice that a certain product group uh, we have not uh, coded and they may be missing. If you find that to be the case, uh, please let us know and we'll quickly update it. Some of these, as you'll notice, this kitchen product group is missing a um, estimated number of sales, but it, it's, it also doesn't have a sales rank. So in order to have an estimated number of sales, it has to have a sales rank um, and it has to have sellers. So keep a lookout for that. But um, play around with this, tell me what you think, but we are um, very excited about this feature. The next big, big feature um, that we've finally added for our uh, customers across the pond is VAT, Value Added Tax. If you don't know what VAT is, consider yourself lucky because I, I have a headache just, uh, just thinking about it. It is a somewhat complicated uh, tax system that is used um, outside of the United States. And a lot of our customers are outside of the United States and have requested this calculation to be added. We finally have. You'll notice up here we have sort of a new user interface, but a lot of these uh, options are the same. We've basically consolidated some of the some of the fields we had here into this nice little neat dropdown. And as part of that dropdown, you'll notice we have uh, VAT settings here. So you can see, for example, I can set that tax to, you know, um, 18%. And as I type this, you can see it's this is a live field. It'll update this automatically here. And it'll also update the VAT dollars automatically here. And you could also calculate VAT based on um, your registration in the market, whether you're registered or, or not registered. You'll, you'll notice it makes a difference in how the calculation is applied. So for those of you that understand VAT and use it, this will hopefully make some sense to you. Uh, please let me know if you notice any issues. We've had some beta testers testing this and they seem to be happy with the um, calculations, but everyone with VAT tax I've noticed seems to have their own little way of doing things because it is somewhat complicated. Um, so please let me know if, um, if this works for you. You'll also notice little bitty things here that uh, are the same but are just named differently. So, for example, calculate multipacks. This was here uh, before, but it was just named something different. Uh, as part of this new update, we've we've renamed some existing fields to uh, to be a little bit more self-explanatory and user-friendly. And we'll get into some of those others here in a bit. Uh, before we get off of VAT tax, one cool thing that we can do here with VAT is we could update this. We could double click and we can update. Keep your eye on the profit right here. I'm going to update this 18% to 25% and you'll notice that our profit uh, changes live. Uh, or we could go to zero and you'll see what happens. So you guys can set a VAT tax across the board as I have of 18%, but you could always go in here and make individual adjustments because uh, one really complicated thing about VAT is it, when you really get into the details, it doesn't necessarily apply across the board the same way for every single type of product, which is what makes it um, very complicated. So this program, um, this, uh, this feature here allows you to have uh, the ultimate flexibility with VAT tax to adjust it by just double clicking on the cell and making that adjustment. Um, so earlier, I, no I, I noted that we have changed um, uh, uh, 
how we name certain things, this being one of them. We also changed two other fields. Uh, one of them is uh, sell price. Now this used to be called uh, cost to estimate fees, which was sort of confusing because it implied that it was a cost, but really what this column is, it's sell price. It's, it's the price that uh, the program is assuming you will sell this product on Amazon. So currently the program um, uh, assumes that you're going to sell basically at the lowest FBA or buy box price. So in this case, buy box is $27.99. We're assuming you're going to match that. But let's say you look at it and say, you know what? I could sell this product at $32.22. And, uh, and you could plug in your own assumed sell, sell price, just like the VAT field where you where it automatically calculated um, the profit and updated everything, you could do the same thing with sell price. Now you could always do this before. Uh, all we did here is we just changed the name from cost to estimate fees to sell price. Um, the other is uh, margin impact. So we had margin impact, margin impact and we changed that to seller proceeds uh, so that we are naming our our, our fields uh, more consistently with how Amazon is naming uh, naming it in their FBA calculator. So seller proceeds is basically all of the um, all of your proceeds after expenses from selling the product. Um, you could you could see more definitions in, on our website in our knowledge base. We have a um, uh, a grid, uh, a, a column definition. Uh, I think we call it a column definition chart and it's in our uh, knowledge base. We're going to update it for some of these new uh, things we're updating today, but that column definition um, chart is very useful because it'll tell you exactly what each of these means and how they're calculated in detail. Um, so aside from Aside from that, some other new stuff that we've added is um, you'll notice um, in the options here, this looks a little bit different. We've just renamed some things. So previously we had purchase price assumption and it was a little bit flawed because it was only applied to uh, it was only applied to either the uh, competing seller search or the browser search because these two searches never have a purchase price. So you need some way to assume a purchase price because they you never have them. But what what it what we uh, what we couldn't do before is uh, apply the same settings for a spreadsheet where you just don't plug in a purchase price, and also a quick check where you don't plug in a purchase price. So now the setting for assumed purchase price, and you'll notice it's now we're using the new uh, terminology of sell price instead of cost to estimate fees. But now this setting uh, is universal to any, every single search that we offer. So it's very simple, it's across the board. If there is no purchase price in your, your spreadsheet or input of any sort, then we will assume a purchase price based on this percentage of sell price. Um, and you could obviously change that percentage here as well. Other than uh, those features, we have uh, made a lot of fixes. Um, I'm going to talk about a few of them, but I'm not going to go over all of them because they are uh, plentiful. And you can see the full update list uh, that is published with this video and on our website. But, you know, one cool thing that we've updated is that, um, you know, if you guys noticed, if you were uh, processing files, like while the file was processing and you ever tried to go into the results tab and, and try to you know, start your analysis. The this it was impossible because this vertical scroll bar would keep jumping up and down every time a new batch of results came in. This vertical scroll bar would reset to the bottom, and then you would scroll up and try to do your thing, and then it would reset to the bottom. So we've we fixed that annoyance, and that that no longer um, that no no longer happens anymore. Uh, the other update that we've made is um, to our browser search. We've completely overhauled the back end of this browser search. And if you guys haven't played with this and, and haven't used this feature, I have another video that I recently put out on this. It's very powerful for product research. Um, I would definitely check it out. But uh, what we've done is you'll 
we, we have updated this browser, so it's it's now using the newest uh, browser. And you no longer get that annoying message that says Amazon doesn't uh, support this browser. And also by updating it, um, the page here now displays exactly the way it would display in a in your in your regular uh, browser. Um, it, in the previous versions, you would find pages that would skew and kind of look a little funny, and it would still work, but it wasn't pretty. Uh, so we've updated that, so now it works 100% like your typical browser would. And like I said, what you don't see here is we've made a lot of um, uh, improvements on the back end, so we could actually find and scrape a lot more with this version um, with the improved technology now than we did in previous versions. So this browser search is, is much more effective now than, than it ever has been. So I would, I would strongly advise you guys to check it out. Um, we've also now um, tied uh, your country. So, you know, I have all these countries available. Uh, we've tied the country now to the, to the search results. Previously, there was a little bug where you know, if this was processed for the for the UK market, but but you had the US selector here in the results, it would give you like a US Amazon link instead of the native country that you processed the list in. Um, not sure if anyone actually noticed that. I uh, noticed it and fixed it very quickly. But uh, now you'll notice that the the country where you processed your list is now prefixed on this file automatically. You'll see US, France, Italy, UK, Mexico. You'll see that start to come in on um, on your new on your new searches. Um, there are many many other small improvements, things that you may not notice, um, uh, but they are there that improve performance and also fix various bugs. There are lots of lots of lots of little things in this update, and uh, hopefully a lot of those little things all materialize to be. Uh, big things and improve your experience with the program. Uh, certainly, I hope the estimated number of sales and VAT tax uh, calculations uh, improve uh, your experience with the program. Uh, please let us know uh, what you think. Come visit our Facebook page and new Twitter page uh, to be the first to get the latest updates on program developments and new features. We're going to put out something very soon on the AMZ Analyzer web application, which is coming very soon. We're getting so close now. We hope to release that at the, at the end or maybe the beginning of the new year. And we'll release some new sneak peeks of that soon. So please uh, subscribe and share our, um, our new Facebook and Twitter pages to get the latest updates and help us grow and spread the word uh, to others. Thanks for joining me and I hope you enjoy this update. Take care.